Welcome to Fantastic Plastic, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. In Fantastic Plastic, I'll be presenting strategies and techniques for injection molded plastic part design using SolidWorks CAD software. I'm Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer with the Demonic Group. The Demonic Group is a full service product development consultancy located just outside Chicago, Illinois. In this installment, We'll be taking a look at a way that to easily and quickly model planar lip and groove geometry using SolidWorks. I've seen a lot of different techniques for creating lip and grooves, both planar and non-planar, and this week we'll look at the planar, in my opinion, is the easiest and most stable way to go about creating this geometry. So here is the perimeter of a, a large plastic shroud that I've created the finished lip and groove geometry on. We're going to zoom in to take a look at the way I do it. So I end up using these little finger details, I call them, that end up acting as the back side of the groove. So this is one uh, portion of the groove and this is the other portion of the groove. Uh, I prefer this technique as it allows for a thicker wall section instead of trying to build the entire lip and groove into the nominal wall section of the part. So I'm going to roll back in the feature tree here, take a look at how I created this. And the order of, that, of operations in SOLIDWORKS here is a little bit important to save yourself a whole bunch of work later. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch on this face. And I'm using the right click uh, select tangency to grab all the outside edges of the part and then converting them into the sketch. You can see the uh, on edge relation here from the convert entities. So the very first thing I want to do is create that sketch that defines the entire groove perimeter by using convert entities. Uh, and now I'm creating that finger rib and then I'm using the curve driven pattern which we'll be looking at in detail in a later video. It's a great tool for quickly propagating uh, geometry around the perimeter of parts. So the reason I needed to create my sketch uh, above the rib and the pattern is if I went to create my sketch that I'm actually going to use to cut the groove at this point, uh, I would need to select all of these little edges individually. See there I accidentally grabbed the face. I need to convert them in and then they're actually too short so I need to go in and either drag the edges longer or add a little line segment here to have a closed profile. So to save myself all of that work, just make sure uh, that I create the sketch uh, above those uh, fingers which then subsequently interrupt the edge saving or forcing me to select far more entities than I'd like to. So at this point the finger geometry is set up and I'm going to use a thin feature extrude cut and here I've just converted that sketch, uh, that original sketch that I had created for curve for pattern into the sketch again and I'm a huge fan of the thin feature extrude um, for managing sketch relations instead of using uh, the offset edge. So if I had done all of my layout in this I would have had to uh, close my profile here, I would have needed to offset all of my edges. Uh, if model edges change the offset entities a relation in the sketch is very hard to reattach if not impossible. Uh, I just try and shy away from sketch offsets wherever possible and I'm going to get all of my offset dimension in the thin feature property manager. So you can actually control the offset in both directions quickly and easily at the feature manager level instead of trying to bury that into the sketch. Uh, note that I've dragged my line segment uh, over because I want to uh, make sure that the edge is cut all the way through. So I'm also building draft into my feature wherever possible. Uh, this is going to save me a whole bunch of work instead of having to use the draft tool after the fact to apply draft to all of these edges. Uh, so one thing to note here is that in my first direction I'm cutting the depth of the groove, three millimeters in this situation with a half degree of draft. In direction two, I need to select draft outward to make sure that the uh, draft directions are uh, aligned and going in the correct direction. I'm then controlling the depth or the width of my groove geometry with the thin feature instead of that sketch offset just because I find the sketch offset is a little bit uh, unwieldy for reattaching those relations. So that was it. It's really quick and easy to uh, create the groove by using the Thin Feature Extrude tool. So moving on to 
the lip geometry. The lip geometry is created in a similar fashion, except I don't need to have those fingers. So I'm going to once again use a thin feature extrude. I have the outside edges of the part converted into a sketch. And then it's just a matter of using the thin feature. Once again, I'm controlling the size of my uh, lip width of this lip with the thin feature instead of using a sketch offset saves me a whole bunch of time instead of having to offset all those edges I'll just rely on the thin feature tool and a little bit of cleanup works required you can see that uh, I actually want to have this face continue all the way on so this is a kind of maybe a downside of the thin feature tool is that you can't really control the angle of outside faces uh, it may be more obvious on the other side of this part here we actually have a little bit of a flat because the thin feature tool creates uh, the outside faces normal to the, the curve that would have been in the sketch here. So a quick uh, workaround here to fix that geometry is use the surface offset tool with a zero value to create a copy and then I'm using the replace face tool. So the way this works is I select the face I'd like to replace, in this case uh, the short face of the lip and I'll select that surface offset. You do have to create a surface offset for this to work. You cannot just pick uh, this underlying face. You do have to have a surface body for it to work. And then I don't like to have all those extra surface bodies uh, hanging around in the feature tree uh, or in my surface bodies folder. So instead of hiding them when I'm done with them, I just use the body delete tool to delete those two uh, surface bodies so they're no longer uh, in the model and hanging out. Just try and keep my feature tree nice and clean. So to recap the planar lip and groove geometry we're going to, uh, my best practice is to use the thin feature tool that way I get all of the offsets in the feature manager instead of having them buried in sketch offsets so this is the sketch in purple that I'm using to cut the groove geometry remember those fingers that back up the other side of the lip and is uh, because that order of operation is important you need to create the sketch before the fingers so that way you don't have all those short edges and one way you can uh, sometimes help visualize is turning on that show flat tree view which will unabsorb all of the sketches so you can see the correct order uh, that they're applied in. Subsequently the lip geometry is also easily created with the thin feature extrude tool and then I can clean up uh, errant end faces of the lip with the replace face tool. I hope you enjoyed this week's SOLIDWORKS video tutorial presented by the Demonic Group. Please subscribe to the Demonic Group on YouTube by clicking our logo in the bottom right of the screen to stay up to date on new video releases. As well, click the SOLIDWORKS icon to be taken to our website where you can download the example SOLIDWORKS files used in this week's video. And finally, check out other great content by the Demonic Group, Will It Fill It and Surfaces and Splines by clicking the video links on the left of the screen.